Is this what the Republicans get for not having their act together, for not standing together? Now, the Democrats have the edge in the Senate. Herschel Walker being defeated by Senator Raphael Warnock, thereby cementing that 51 to 49 margin. And while conservatives still have the House, you gotta ask yourself, with all this good luck, where are we really going? Hello, welcome to the program. We're going to talk about that. Plus, what are these 17 accounts of tax fraud at the Trump Corporation really about? We're digging in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trish Regan Show. I am Trish. Portions of today's program are brought to you by Legacy Precious Metals. There's never been a better time to invest for the long haul in something like precious metals. Call them today, 1-866-589-0560, or go to LegacyPMInvestments.com for your free guide. We'll talk a little bit more about the economy in just a bit. But first, I want to get to this news on Herschel Walker's law. This should be kind of a warning sign, right? If the GOP is serious in any way, shape, or form about actually trying to have an impact there come 2024, then they're going to have to figure this one out. And they're going to need candidates that are real conservatives that have track records, proven track records. And it doesn't have to be in politics. Heck, I'd prefer it not be in politics. I'd prefer, frankly, that we get more people from the business community into politics, people that actually understand how to run a business, therefore how to run an organization, people who understand how to get stuff done. And I think too often there have been mistakes made. Oh, well, let's go with this sort of celebrity personality. That's in part what happened, don't forget, in Pennsylvania. It was let's go with this celebrity personality who we think will connect. And you know what? He didn't connect. He didn't seem authentic and real. And while he might have had some outsider appeal and that he was not from the political sphere, he didn't have enough acumen in sort of the real world the real world business sensibility that I think, I do believe, Americans are craving. This is partly why Trump was able to break through in a significant way back in 2016, because he was different. It's why Ross Perot succeeded in ways that we hadn't seen politicians succeed before. Of course, he was an independent and we are a two-party system. And so that didn't eventually serve him well. But If I were the Republican Party or running the Republican Party right now, I'd be looking for people, one, that had a clue that had actually worked in the real world, or two, I'd be looking for politicians that have a a track record. I mean, that's why Ron DeSantis, I think, in many ways could be very attractive. But it's really clear they need to figure this out. And while Donald Trump has a lot of appeal amongst many members of the conservative base, the reality is this, that appeal only goes so far. It only transfers so far, just because you like him doesn't mean you're going to like someone else. He has his thing going on, but it doesn't mean you're going to pick the news anchor or the talk show host just because you liked him. And let's not forget one of the reasons people liked him was because they trusted him from a business standpoint. So people who are smart at creating companies, that's, I think, who Americans trust. It's who they relate to. And yeah, celebrity, all that kind of stuff. I guess that's the icing on the cake and that can go either way. But clearly he resonated where some of these other picks that he has chosen just really haven't. And so this is where the Republicans need to step in. Everybody kind of needs to be on the same page, get a handle on this because 2024 is going to be here sooner than you think. Another reason why we all, as listeners, if you're listening to this program, need to think about 2024 and the organizations that we're supporting in order to help get us to the best place. And one of the best ways to do this is to be part of the Association of Mature American Citizens. You've heard me talk about them before because it's just a terrific group. It's like the conservative version, I guess, of the AARP. I think they're wonderful because you get all kinds of financial advice from them, advice on medical plans, lots of really important stuff that you need. Perhaps what's best, though, is that you're joining forces with more than 2 million Americans that are very like-minded. And so your money, your $16 a year, which helps you to sift through all the financial advice and the medical stuff out there while simultaneously giving you discounts to restaurants, hotels, travel things, all kinds of things that I know you're going to love. You're joining forces with more than 2 million people that feel like you do about the need to help our country, to help our seniors, to help our future, to help protect the world for the next generation. And so AMAC is out there fighting for these causes every single day in Washington, D.C., 
throughout the country while simultaneously giving you sort of the nuts and bolts of what you need to succeed. And it's cheap, $16 a year. So go check them out. amac.us slash Regan, my last name. That's amac, A-M-A-C dot U-S slash R-E-G-A-N. Go check them out today. And let me know how those discounts are. I think you're going to like them. Again, amac.us slash Regan. Anyway, the powers of B are up to their old tricks here. And now they, um, well, they're never going to stop going after Donald Trump. I think that's pretty clear. But now they may have something that they think they can hang their hat on. I would just say it's not all that. I I would caution that it's not all that. Donald Trump's family business was convicted of tax fraud, with a New York jury finding that the Trump organization engaged in these off-the-books compensation-type schemes to pay some of the executives. And they did so via car leases, and you got apartments, cash, this kind of thing. And that isn't really allowed. And so consequently, they, uh, the organization, organization that is, was convicted on 17 different accounts. So I realized a lot of people are like, aha, we got them, we got them. Well, not so fast. And I would only say that because again, they still haven't like been able to tie it quite back to him. And in the scheme of things, this is a $1.6 million fine. Like that's, that's like not a lot, right? It's just $1.6 million and it's a fine. I want to be very clear, tax fraud of any kind is not good. I mean, hey, that's um, <clears throat> it's one of the reasons we're not Greece, right? Because people do pay their taxes. And we have to be cautious and careful not to make those taxes so onerous and so difficult that people will seek workarounds. But, you know, you got, you got to pay the bills, as they say. And you, you got to pay Uncle Sam whether you like it or not. In this particular case... There seems to have been an effort to pay people via other compensation styles and means, so all these perks, et cetera, that the executives weren't paying tax on, which one might argue they should, right? If you're getting a a free apartment, quote unquote, maybe that's really not free. Somebody's got to pay the tax on that. And that would be either, I guess, the company itself or the individual. So it is peculiar It has happened before. It shouldn't happen ever. And they were able able to go after the Trump organization on that. I'm surprised it didn't actually happen ages ago. And I'm surprised that's kind of all it is, right? Because they have wanted so badly to take him down. And yet this is all they came up with, a $1.6 million fine for the company. So they kind of struck out on that front. I'll tell you who's not striking out. Not now, not any day of the week. And that's my little dog, Fluffy. And he's not striking out, well, one, because he's just adorable and I love him to bits, but two, because I am making sure that he is the healthiest he could possibly be. And the way I do that is actually thanks to Dr. Dennis Black, a naturopathic doctor who cares so much about health, not just his own health, but his own dog's health, all dog's health. And he has studied this for years and through his work, came up with this terrific, wonderful supplement of vitamins and nutrients and digestive enzymes that dogs need in order to have a long and healthy, happy life. All you have to do is sprinkle a little bit of this supplement. It's known as Rough Greens. It's called Rough Greens. You get it, right? R-U-F-F-Greens.com. I give Fluffy a little bit of rough greens. I just sprinkle right on top of his food once every day. And I'm happy because I know he's happy. And I know that he is getting all those nutrients that he needs. And so it has been a mission of Dr. Black's. By the way, he's a former army ranger. So the real deal in every way, it has been his mission to make sure that every dog gets access to these nutrients. So the good news is, if you're listening to this, if you're a fan of the show, you can go right now to roughgreens.com. Again, it's roughgreens.com because Dr. Black is giving out a free trial bag. All you have to do is pay for shipping to anyone who wants it. Again, it's his mission to make sure that every dog has these nutrients. It's a noble mission. It's an important mission and one that I know Fluffy has benefited from. So I encourage you to go check it out. Roughgreens.com today. Did you see the story out of Walmart? Walmart CEO is saying that they may have to close doors because of this uptick in shoplifting. My gosh, this is not good, folks. I want to get to that in a second. But first, a quick shout out amid all this inflation to, again, my friends over at Legacy Precious Metals, because you see these inflation numbers. I don't think they're going to get much better. I think they're 
they're going to get a whole lot worse. I think that, or at least they're going to stay consistently bad because we have some real fundamental problems in front of us, including the fact that it takes six to nine months for any of these interest rate increases to really show up in the rest of the economy. We talked about that actually on yesterday's program because it's a big deal. And that is really, that's the gold standard, six to nine months. Some people will tell you 12, but I'm being conservative here, six to nine months. So we have not really felt the effects, the slowdown, if you would, in the economy that's coming from the Fed. And my fear, my concern is that you're going to get this slowdown, but you're not going to get You're not going to get the downturn in inflation that they so badly want because the Fed always, look, they always mess up. Go back to the depression and you can see that they've been messing up forever. In fact, one of the reasons we had the market crash in 1929 was because the Fed was too active printing ahead of it. And so then we went into the depths of the depression and market loses 85% of its value. And what does the Fed do? Oh, comes up with the bright idea that somehow it just needs to pull money out of circulation at that point. So you see what I'm saying? They're always a day late and a dollar short. They always get it wrong. That's the one thing you can probably really and truly count on. So they're going to get it wrong again. I I said all along, they never should have left rates this low for so long. They never should have engaged in that much money printing for so long. But they did. And now we're going to suffer with the reverse because eventually, instead of upping rates at a, a more active pace when they needed to, they're going to draw this thing out for forever and ever, and we're going to wind up in a, in a bad spot, which is one of the reasons why I do say, listen, you need a diversified portfolio. Part of that diversification for anyone really should include an investment in things like gold. A lot of people like silver as well. I mean, I've always looked to gold historically as just one of those ways to help measure out some of the fluctuations in your portfolio and also help protect the purchasing power of your U.S. dollar. Let's face it, a dollar isn't what it used to be. Heck, even the dollar store broke the buck, right? Didn't they used to have dime stores? I remember my grandmother telling me stories about dime stores. So it's a reason to look at something like gold. And when you do, call my wonderful friends over at Legacy Precious Metals. I know they'll take good care of you. You're welcome to use my name. Their website, if you want your free investing guide, is LegacyPMInvestments.com. Or you can call them at 1-866-589-0560. Again, 1-866-589-0560. Don't put that off. Do it today. It really is important stuff for the long haul, for your future, for your family's future. Speaking of everyone's future, since everyone shops at Walmart these days, I think this is pretty important. The CEO of the company said that it is quite possible that there will be stores closing as well as higher prices on store shelves, if this uptick that they've been seeing in shoplifting continues. Think about that. The the world's largest retailer here says they've got a real problem with shoplifting and they can't really manage it. They may have to close stores as a result. And that's a pretty significant statement. But you see, there's been a very lax approach from prosecutors. And if that continues... If you don't have the government protecting your store, well, then how can you really be in business? How can you operate that store? Maybe you could charge higher prices and then hire more security guards. That's going to impact prices, of course, and that's going to impact the overall economy. And people are going to complain because they're going to say, oh, why is it that you know this store in this neighborhood is having to charge more? I guess maybe you spread it out over all the stores. I'm not really sure. But look, I think the bottom line here is that government is not doing its job. Government is supposed to keep us safe. Government is supposed to protect the value of the U.S. dollar. This government has been an epic failure in every way, shape, and form. Failing our entire society, failing our economy, failing our kids. Our kids who are so far behind because of really bad decisions made on behalf of teachers unions instead of on behalf of our schools. It's a problem. I want you to make sure that you have signed up for this podcast. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up so you get it delivered every single day automatically. Also, go to my website, trishintel.com. I'm there every day and we have a lot to discuss. I'll see you tomorrow.